Lastly, a rugby icon. An Olympic gold medal winner. A women's rugby World Cup winner here on home soil. And that is only half of the story, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ruby Tui. <laughs> So. What a welcome. Hey, look at us. Have a seat. Yeah, cool. Kia ora whanau. <sighs> oh, I'm not sure it's my job to welcome you home, but welcome home because you're back playing rugby on home soil for the first time since the Rugby World Cup win. How's it been? Tēnā koe, Amanda. Nā mahi tō tahi o te hau kāinga o Tamaki Makaurau. Nā te whātua o rākei te kare... Manawahine ingwa, na na na, Natalie Portman, ah. <laughs> ah, kia ora kare, kia ora kare. Tēnā koe, tēnā tautau, tā lofa lava, lofa atu. Um, o Vailoa Vailo Palauli lo unu'u, 685, baby. Um, hey, I am happy to be home. Phew, I've got to say, thank you. I was, you, were, you were scaring me a bit there, because this conversation, I was going to struggle. <laughs> um, I've just been in the States, you're right, and so when I say kia ora, I just get like black looks, so I'm very, very happy to be home, but I must say, mariri, it is so cold here in New Zealand. It's, hey, I slipped over and woke up in Vegas one of the nights, and it was 44 degrees <laughs> at midnight, and then I get off the plane in Tamaki Makaurau, it's like 5 degrees, so look, I'm very happy to be home, Manda, thank you for welcoming home, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, this FIFA World Cup, how bloody good. God, have you been able to enjoy it? I mean, it must be very different being able to enjoy a World Cup, not having to worry about the playing oh, bit. Oh, it's like, I think all my black friends' um, sisters will be able to relate. It's just bringing everything. Who watched that quarter with Ozzy and those penalty? Like, I was, you know, jumping up and down, and I was just like, there's literally no feeling like So, oh, sorry. are the Kiwis supporting the Matildas? My Let's get that out of the way. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. You want to get this straight? You want to set this straight up? I will support a nation who is supporting their home World Cup and making it historic, standing up and saying, we are here. So if that's the Tillies, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> when you think back now to your World Cup success here on home soil, how much for you was, obviously about the winning, but the bigger picture? and promoting the game and equality. Absolutely, I'm, I still am just so proud of this country. And you know, I remember there was murmurs of like, oh, if we host the soccer world, co-host the soccer world cup, I'll come from the States, please don't. They say <laughs> soccer, hosting the FIFA football world cup. Um, you know, oh, New Zealand won't come out. And I've had the same feeling that I had at the rugby world cup. I know New Zealand's great. I know we get behind amazing causes. Like, look at the history books of Aotearoa. We are an amazing country, as is Australia, you know, punch well above our weight. And people always say, you know, oh, the Black Ferns changed the game with our World Cup. We didn't do anything except what we've been doing for the last how many years? It was the it was the Aotearoa people who changed the game. They turned out in the opening game. They broke all the records first before anybody else, and they sold out that final World Cup. And I'm sorry, fam, but it was, we won because of you. <laughs> so thank you, New Zealand. I knew it. I knew it'd be great. What, when was the first point in your life, in your career, you realised there were inequalities, there was something to fight for? I, I definitely wouldn't have articulated it like that, but I would have, I would have said, you know, I think as kids we see when things aren't right, when, you know, why does this person get that, why is that person crying, you know, you, you feel it in your soul, and I guess I've worked really hard to, to keep that feeling and stay true to those values. I, one, of the, one of my strongest values is aroha, alofa, love, you know, I think, all of us have that in us. They have love in us. And so, you know, there's, we're out here, equal lies with a Z, you know. <laughs> <laughs> People will cut. We're out here and we're doing it. And it's just, I truly believe these are just all actions of love, you know. And um, no, even the toughest rugby players are full of love, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're making mention, aren't you, to growing up and some tough times at home and what you had to 
see and, and witness at home, which I know you've written about so articulately in your book. Every single person on this planet has a story. Every single person on this planet feels emotion. That's literally what makes us human. And if you're talking about one race on the planet, it's humankind. It's the human race. And, you know, I keep telling people who run away from feelings and emotions and uplifting and all of that, mate, just make a robot to play rugby then. You know, it's, it's part of who we are. And if you, if you dig into that, which I had the privilege of to do with my family, with people I love and care about, oh, it's empowering. We are who we are. And it's, it's scary, just like, you know, running into an English prop. <laughs> you know, it's bloody scary, mate. But on the other side of that fear is... Oh, that's right, Rugby World Cup. So, you know, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Do you, I, I find it fascinating, the debates amongst sports people. Do you think every sports person who has a platform has a responsibility to use that platform? Or is it OK for people just to focus on winning the medals? Yeah, look, I was actually having a conversation about this. Oh, we often are as athletes, you know, what is our role? Inspire people, um, become role models. And I think every athlete has a right to their own kaupapa around that, um, or whakaro, or understanding, or beliefs. I think being a role model, you can say fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look in the eyes, I like to say fortunately, a byproduct of our role in society becomes being a role model. And so, the decisions we make are a little heavier. You know, um, it's funny sometimes, I, maybe because I'm Kiwi, you know, like I pick up a rubbish or something next minute, Ruby, saving the planet, you know, like, <laughs> it gets all, hey, it gets, a bit, it gets a bit much. But then if I do something bad, you know, if I just drop rubbish, like Ruby, destroying planet Earth, like, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a bit heavier, um, the things we do, but I, I love that, I love that. God, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? I think the most powerful thing isn't what I want my legacy to be. I think it's what do we want our legacy to be. And I think the exciting thing is, look at the Women's Rugby World Cup. Look at the FIFA World Cup that's going on. Look at this room that we're in and all of the rooms that Equalise has done. Don't tell me there ain't no hope in the world for good things to happen. That We are sitting in a moment of evidence. And I, I just encourage everybody to savour these moments because there are dark times in our life. It's just a part of life, these ups and these downs. And so this moment that we get to be in, this room, this conversation that we're having, this is a bloody good moment. And it wouldn't have been what it is without everybody here. So it's not mine, it's ours. Ruby Tui, I could Mate. speak to you for hours. It's been such a pleasure. Mate, Thank you. You're awesome. You. So cool to see you. Love you, suit girl. See you later. Mwah.